Hello everyone, welcome to Faith and Friends. The Christmas season is in full effect. How many of you have started and finished your shopping? Done one. I don't think I started yet. Did you have more than one on your list? Well, I started, I haven't finished. I did get two, I got two. You got me two gifts? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, we that's truly are life. friends <laughs> when we buy each other such special gifts for Christmas. You can have that poinsettia over there sitting next to Mark. It has your name on it. Well, we want to encourage you to uh, think about more than just giving or gifting. We want to think, <laughs> encourage you to think about giving and serving others. And we'll have more on that coming up later on in the show. In fact, we have quite a bit of giving to do today. Several giveaways. Tickets to the upcoming David Phelps concert. Tickets to the upcoming Duck Dynasty event in Lima. And that's just the start of today's Faith and Friends. We'll also have an interview with author and inspirational speaker Elena Rarig on her latest books and we'll hear from Dr. Trudy Pieper on how to stay well during the winter cold and flu season. But first we have the prescription to stay spiritually well all year long. We're going to dive into the Bible and just like Jennifer started last week we're continuing the path to the manger. Last week Mary was visiting Elizabeth. This week we're jumping several months ahead. Mary and Joseph are now starting to travel to Bethlehem, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. And it came to pass in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed to her to be delivered. What an amazing story that we get to relive each and every Christmas time. Out of all the stories in the Bible, this one comes back each and every year at December, and it really just becomes a part of at least my life and my family's life. And Everywhere you look, just for, for three, four weeks, you're really living this out, or at least we try to. I also find it incredible to think about the prophecy and the fact that they went to Bethlehem, not because they decided to go on vacation, <laughs> wasn't like, hey, let's go to Bethlehem. No, because they were called to Bethlehem, yet hundreds of years earlier, it was prophesied that that is where the Messiah would be born. Well, if you look at the Old Testament, there are so many different prophecies that the birth of Jesus fulfilled. It, it wasn't just a coincidence. It, if it was just a coincidence, it had been remarkable, but it wasn't. It was all part of God's perfect plan. And that's a perfect plan that is still being fulfilled to this day, a perfect plan that he wrote centuries ago, and a perfect plan that continues to be fulfilled each and, and every day up until today and going to centuries from now as well. It's yeah. never ending. It's never ending. You know, Jesus came to this earth for many reasons, and one of those reasons was to serve others. Even though it's now a few weeks after Thanksgiving, the idea of giving and being thankful is something we should practice daily. And we have a great example from the recent hometown handoff. It all started with a text between two NFL players, then a phone call to me, which turned into visits to a few local grocery stores and a call with Tom Birch at Lock 16. So within a few conversations, we were all set to give Thanksgiving meals to families in need in the hometown communities of both Kyle Miller from Elida and Jared Pugsley from Lima Senior. The Tuesday before Thanksgiving, God brought all the pieces together with the FCA huddles from Elida and Lima Senior, joining our friends from Basement Doctor, the Spartans Deca Club, as 1,000 Lock 16 meals were packed and distributed. Each family came in with a voucher. They received hugs, full course meals, and the testimonies of pro athletes like Andrew McCutcheon, Bobby Bowden, Tony Dungy, and Wapak's own Heidi Schlegel. That's all part of a booklet with the gospel message that's provided by U.S. Plastics. Jesus fed people's mouths and souls when he walked this earth. Kyle and Jared helped to do the same thing. We'll have more on Jared coming up later in our Faith and Friends Faith on the Field segment. Well, we love watching local individuals do great things for God. Local wife, mom, and nationally recognized author and speaker Elena Rarig is taking her passion to see others break free from past struggles and pain to a larger realm. Dancy has the latest with the founder of Box Crushers, which includes some really neat children's books designed to boost self-esteem and confidence. Well, it has been a year since Elena Rarig was here in our studios talking with me. And since that time, I don't know if you can see it yet, but there is a stack of books in front of us. Okay. 
You have been one busy gal. That I have. <laughs> yes. I have a lot of passion for what I do. <laughs> I guess you do. You are the founder of Box Crushers. Correct. And um, one of these books here is the original, um, mm -hmm. and this is the one that you came on the show to talk about um, a year ago. But since then, you have a number of different books, a couple of children's books that we're going to talk about yeah. specifically. So um, how have you been? Good. <laughs> busy. Yes. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, it's my passion and I'm on yeah. fire and I'm having fun with it. And I feel like God is just flooding my heart, my mind, and it just keeps coming out. So, so is there a main theme to your books? There is. If the company started again with box crushers, mm -hmm. the four box personas. You know, there should be no box to think outside of. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I didn't want to just tell people what kind of box persona they were. So it was like, how do we get them past that? Okay. So that's where the 5D transformation system came in. And that's the big white workbook. And so then I was, I'm in prison facilities now teaching yes. that. And we're actually venturing into schools. We want to bring self-development, personal development into schools for high school students, colleges, in, as an extracurricular, or not extracurricular, um, elective is yes. what they call that. Yes. So we're working towards that. Well, then people wanted to know who I am, you know, how I know what I know at a young age. Mm -hmm. So the autobiography came out. And then with the inmates, I wanted to teach them how to write and publish their autobiography because they have to have a great story to tell. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And people would be amazed at how far these inmates have come from when they first got incarcerated because mm -hmm. they've been in programming and they're very intelligent, mm -hmm. they have passion and heart and their stories need to be told. Mm -hmm. And so I started a publishing company so I could publish their books for next to nothing. And so then I wrote a book on how to write and publish a book. Yes. But then they needed a workbook so then I have workbooks and that's what the two big black ones are. So you have a workbook for personal development if you want to write that type of book. And then there's one for if you want to write your autobiography. And you're also a mom. A and a four. Wife. A four. <laughs> yeah. A wife of one, but a mother of four. <laughs> oh, good to know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so they all just started happening. And then about a month ago, I was driving. I said, I really need to write a children's book. I, you know, I have the 5D transformation system, and mm -hmm. there's such powerful lessons. And I thought if we could bring them down to a kid level, then I could have a children's book that captures the essence of some of those lessons. So that are, those are my two newest. Okay. And um, this one in green is called I Am Easton. And then you have another one, I Am Tori. Yes. The, those are my two youngest children. They are. Okay. So are they about your children or you're using their names? I'm using their names. Okay. There are some things in there. One of the things I talk about is dinner time fun mm -hmm. because I have a rule in my house, no fussing at the dinner table. And I mean, it was to a point I actually pulled up third world countries and showed my kids things like this is the food you have to eat and this is the life you get and there shouldn't be that fussing and complaining. And then, you know, how you ask your kid, how was school today? And they say, oh, fine. So I have a whole bunch of games that we play at dinner to keep the conversation flowing. Um, one of them is remember when. So we go around the table and we say, remember when, and it's usually a funny story of what one of us did. And so to explain that game then, I use a live example of remember when and then tell us something funny my child did. Nice. So there are some examples from their life, their favorite color, their you know, favorite things. Yeah. Um, so no phone zone bit. too at the table? Oh, no phone. Mm -mm. Okay. Nope, not even mine or my husband's. <laughs> yes, because that, yeah. you know, that has become a problem for a lot of families yeah. and um, they need to know how to enter into conversation. Yes, and we actually went as far as, you know, from the time my kids get off the bus until they go to bed, we put the phones away. Now, if there's something very important that somebody mm -hmm. needs to get a hold of us, then, you know, it's out, mm -hmm. but we don't sit on it or, you know, make it a distraction. Definitely. So, yeah. um, I hate to tell you this, but we are <laughs> running out of time. So um, you have so much that you can offer um, different groups in our area. And again, these books are on the market now. Too. They are. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, where can we find you? ElenaRare.com. That's Very it. Simple. Uh -huh. Okay. And then that's also the way to order the books if anyone's interested in purchasing. Yes. There's a tab for Otter Publishing New York, which okay. Otter Publishing, Again, that's a dear story to my heart. It's okay. not that I think otters are cute, but there is a there is a tab on there, and that's where they'll find my books. Okay, mm -hmm. Elena, thank you so much for being with us, and um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. You too. Thank All right. you. Thanks. Back to you, Jen.
If you'd like to buy one of Elena's new books for someone on your Christmas list, the website is elenarerig.com. Reading material, definitely a popular gift this time of year, and for some households, a popular gift every time of the year. Well, you know, a gift-giving suggestion that's hitting Facebook and other social sites encourages a book as one of four mm -hmm. gifts to give those of you you love. So you've bought me two gifts so far. Flowers. Two more. Two petals on the poinsettia. Both red. I've been thinking of doing this idea for my family. It's what I started to talk about. The four gifts. Something you want, something you need, something to wear, something and blue. something to read. Not what do blue. you think? I, I don't see why there has to be four gifts. I think you could probably knock that down to just two gifts, really. <laughs> But stingy, stingy Christmas giving guy. But, uh, you know, the, the point <laughs> is, don't just get stuff. Try and find a gift with some meaning. Try yeah. and find a gift that has some sort of purpose to life, which if you really want to think about the gift giving mood, we're trying to mirror what God did. He gave us the greatest gift of all, his son, the, the eternal life that we have through that gift of his death and resurrection. So that's kind of what this entire gift idea is, is to, is to mimic a bigger purpose. So that would mean my 12-year-old's request for gift cards probably doesn't fit in that well, category. Well, gift cards are a tool that can be used for something you want, something you need, something you wear, and something you read. Could be. Could something be. blue. <laughs> if you want to wear something blue. <laughs> well, gift cards are actually some of the most popular gifts to give, right? Yeah, according to uh, the website <laughs> WalletHub.com, gift cards are the most sought-after type of present for the ninth straight holiday season, hmm. as holiday shoppers are expected to shell out an average of $805 this year. The average gift card buyer projected to spend more than $173 on, plastic, on the plastic gift cards alone, which you're intended to share, not... Not until Christmas. Oh, okay. thank you. He cannot have them ahead of time. I look forward to Christmas. You can have your flowers now. Oh, wow. But there are also <laughs> some of gift cards that are perhaps better to give than others. Mm. That's true. Consumer Reports, it sounds like. Wallet Hub, our new lovely, wonderful friend when it comes to financial-related surveys, has ranked the top 10 most popular gift cards now, how many of them do you guys think you can guess? Now, the top four are there, so you get hints, but uh, we're going to guess the top ten. I like restaurant gift cards. Any guesses? We I'm going to guess, like, do, do, are we going with store names here? Can we just be the generic coffee oh, restaurant, coffee shop type place? What do you think would place? be the top, the top ten gift cards to give away? Go ahead. Well, I mean, obviously, you saw that the first couple were the ones that were kind of the big national where you can buy a whole lot of different type of things. So, you know, the, the Visas, the Amazons and that type. I, I'm going to guess like the toy stores are pretty high up as well. Not on the top Nothing. ten. Nothing. Kids like the actual toys probably. Um, how about another guess? Try, try a, is there a restaurant? Well, I, not oh that I want particularly enjoy coffee, but I'm sure like the Starbucks are going to be ding, 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 ding. Number seven. Let's take a look at the top 10 list. So it is, there are the oh, first yeah. four, Visa, Amazon, American Express, iTunes, number five, Walmart, wow. number six, Target, number seven, Starbucks, number eight, Netflix. I didn't even know you buy Give Netflix Give them gift certificates. I don't know, months, everybody probably. steals my Netflix account, so. What is that, by the way? Number nine, eBay, number 10, Google Play. Huh, I just want restaurants. Well, then you <laughs> might like this next one. Okay. Wallet Hub also ranked the top 10 cards with the highest resale value. Are you allowed to resale gift cards? I thought on the back the fine print says not for resale. I'm not sure, but I just have this list. <laughs> so let's take a look and see what this list would be. So if you're thinking about getting gift cards, you want to make sure you're going to get your most money for them. Shell is number one. That would be the gas station, not like the beach. Not seashells? I'd go for seashells. I need to return my shell gift card. Walmart is number two. Target is number three. MasterCard is number four. No restaurants. What is this? Number five, Home Depot, Costco, the Apple Store, Babies R Us. Number nine is Visa. And number 10, you can eat there, Ikea. I don't think you're supposed to, are you? You know, yeah, interesting. Got a restaurant they there. do. Oh, yeah. Oh, I take oh, yeah. my sandwich in and eat on the nice beds. And they, they, they don't like that. You know, interesting though, most of those mustard. most of those stores 
you can't even find around our area. So shop wisely. That's all I would have to say. Shop local. It's great. Shop Get local. A gift card from Bigby. Go to downtown Lima and St. Mary's and all those other places and buy that stuff. Should we list all the different towns, Laddie. <laughs> Well, not making the list. We're not really sure why. Our Duck Dynasty gift cards. Well, I don't even know if there are Duck Dynasty gift cards, but we do know that there are Duck Dynasty tickets available for the FCA District 8 Duck Dynasty event coming up December 17th. And we just so happen to have brought in for us today the FCA District 8 Duck Dynasty organizer. I'm an expert. And that would be you. I'm not a duck hunter, so don't come for duck calls for me. But we do have tickets available. We'll give away, what, two or four? What are we doing? Well, 700. So whatever you want to do. No. You're, you're the one in charge. Four tickets. You can sign up on faithandfriends.wtlw.com. It's actually December the 17th. November Whoops. has passed. Whoops. If you, Sorry, if you show up November fault. 17th, probably not going to. Who knows? There might be a if wedding going on. If you show up November on. 17th, congratulations. Your time machine works. <laughs> and then jump right back to December 17th, <laughs> 7 o'clock. $10 tickets are $12 at the door. So. You want to get them now, you want to register for that as well, you can contact me at alinch at fca.org. Al and Lisa Robertson are coming. It is a fundraiser for FCA. Stites Grocery, a uh, big part of it. We thank Tim Fetter and company for that. That's not all. We have more tickets to give away today. You think it's Christmas or something around here. David Phelps is coming back to the Nice Longer Performing Arts Center in Van Wert on Sunday, December 13th. Yeah, I got that one correct. So just a few days before the Duck Dynasty event here in Lima. I think it's a sold out event, but we have tickets, four tickets that we are giving away. Same method to sign up. Just go to faithandfriends.wtlw.com and click on contest. When filling out the form, let us know whether you are signing up for David Phelps or for Duck Dynasty. And if you'd rather not enter online, you can call us at 419-339-4444 and let us know you want to be entered into the drawing. And sing your favorite David Phelps song, right? That would be, enter. yeah, maybe we'll put you on television. <laughs> Videotape yourself on your phone and you just never know what could happen. Mark is not entering. Well, <laughs> some might say he's a winner in the field and a winner when it comes to serving others. Well, in today's Faith in the Field segment, and he talks with Lima senior grad Jared Pugsley on his recent trip overseas, Kansas City Chiefs, and how God continues to guide him in his everyday life. Uh, London was awesome. You know, seeing Big Ben and um, in person uh, was an awesome experience. And then um, I got to ride the eye, uh, which I saw in the James Bond movie. So when I was actually in front of it, it was like, wow, like I'm really here. So it was sweet. This is Jared's second go-round with the Chiefs, but it's his first full season in Kansas City. It's hard to really feel comfortable at all times um, being on practice squad, but uh, I'm feeling uh, I'm, I'm, I'm finding a place uh, with the organization, and um, we're on a two-game win streak, so it makes it uh, a little bit easier <laughs> going in. A Lima senior grad has Philippians 413 on his Twitter bio, and he leans on God to keep him moving forward. Just to keep faith alive in, in everything that you do, you know, um, and um, me keeping faith, you know, whether it be through football um, um, or whether it be through me being able to help um, others, just keeping faith that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, everything's going to work out for the greater good. And things working out for our hometown Thanksgiving handoff that Jared and Kyle Miller put together with FCA to feed families in need. Man, I'm too excited. I, I, I talked to uh, a couple of people at Lima Senior and um, everybody seems real excited to get it going. And, you know, I, I talked to people and I know this is the first year, but I'm excited for it to be years to come. And um, we're helping out a couple, quite a few families this year. Well, certainly it's been remarkable to see how Jared Pugsley has grown. Even when he was in high school, you could tell he, this was a special young man yeah. mm -hmm. and he continues to give back to his community. He's really something that's been built into him growing up and you can see that shining through as, a, as an adult. I remember walking through this door here at TV44 to sing in the choir during the holiday music festival, a tradition that goes on uh, now and again. And after we did that interview, he said to me, you know, I just want to be someone who the kids at Lima Senior look up to because they can make it. They can, they can make it in life. They can make it and fulfill their dreams, that's what I want to do. So very, very special. That's man. great. Yeah. Well, Jared gets some of the thanks for an incredible turnout for the hometown Thanksgiving handoff. And many of you get thanks for helping set a record for this year's Operation Christmas Child shoebox collection. 18,210 <laughs> wow. boxes 
That's the amount collected from the Northwest Ohio region, and that is a new record. Deb Smith handles the collection process. TV44 is really just, really just a willing location to gather all the boxes. Deb and her crew of volunteers worked so hard all during collection week. So many of you jumped on board, you came in and volunteered, you brought in your shoe boxes. Congratulations to this region for again setting a record by collecting more than 18,200 boxes in this year's Operation Christmas Child shoebox collection. Wow. That's a lot. It's a, a lot of shoes. What a great event. Well, guess what? <laughs> you might not know this. <laughs> I didn't know it. Are you ready? Are you I ready? It November. It's December. <laughs> it's December. That likely is no surprise to most of you, but with the fluctuating temperatures these past several weeks, there are many days. Doesn't feel like December, but it is, and that means cold and flu season is coming next if it's not already here. However, there are ways for you to arm yourself against those pesky bugs. We're jumping into the Faith and Friends archives for today's Lost Creek Care Center Health segment. A year ago at this time, Dancy talked with Dr. Trudy Peeper about ways to build immunity against cold and flu. Maybe one of these tips will help keep you well this winter. We are entering the winter months and, and we kind of dread that because we're stuck inside and it seems if one of us is sick, then, you know, chances are we may all end up getting something, right. but there are ways to fight it, right? Absolutely. There's, there's five herbs I always recommend people have on hand for the winter season. Okay. And with these five herbs, you're going to be able to solve just about every cold, flu, uh, cough, bronchitis that you may have in your family. Okay. And so just a little bit of knowledge will help you here with that. The first one I always recommend is nettles, also known as stinging nettles. And I like nettles because it's just the best multivitamin, multi-mineral you will ever have. In it, God created in such a way that every mineral and vitamin known to mankind is in stinging nettles. Hmm. So if, if no other use as a, as a way of bolstering your health besides your immune system is to take stinging nettles in capsule or you can drink it as a tea but it's high in iron and vitamin C. And that's the great combination because you cannot absorb iron without vitamin C. So God in his wisdom put the two together no and it's a very natural way of getting extra iron into your system. And we know iron is what we need for red blood cells, which gives us our energy in our bodies, not to not only fight off colds, but to give us the energy for life. Right. So right. Um, it also is great because um, it expels uric acid from the kidneys. So that's going to keep your kidneys and your urinary tract flowing and healthier. It's anti-inflammatory, so for people who have arthritis, it's excellent to drink a little nettle tea. It'll help you uh, clear out the, the uric acid and uh, the inflammatories that are in your system okay. so that you can move a little better. And it, it boosts your immune system. So this sounds like a, a no-brainer, yes. you know, so to speak, really, and especially for women. Yes, um, I like it particularly with women who are still um, menstruating, still having their periods. Okay. Every time you have a monthly blood loss, you need to replace that blood, and iron's really important for that. Yes. Um, and you need an absorbable iron. Many times if you find an inorganic iron, it will constipate you and have all these extra problems. Iron's very easy uh, to get from nettles. Drink nettles tea, it, you can buy it at the health food store in tea bags. Just throw a tea bag in if you're already drinking tea, green mm -hmm. tea, which you know is one of the things yeah, my go-to. Yeah, yes it is. Drink your green tea, throw in a nettle bag with it and you can get your iron with that. How about elder? Elder, elderberry. Um, I, I always laugh and say, if you've got mucus, get sambucus. <laughs> and <laughs> sambucus is the Latin name for elderberry. Oh. And you'll see sambucus a lot in, in stores. There's a lot of products made for children that's sambucus. But it is the go-to for any mucus that you may have. It's from the honeysuckle family. It grows in all of our areas in your yards. You may have someone who has an elderberry bush. Get to know them well mm -hmm. so that you can go and you can capture um, the flowers bloom in late spring. You gather those up. They're great for fevers. If children have fevers, if you take the flowers, you brew them into a tea and give that to a drink, it will immediately break their fever. So it's great for that. It's also good, and I just recently had this. My two grandchildren came to see me this weekend, and they got they had pink eye, oh. conjunctivitis. So yeah. uh, I didn't want it, and I didn't want them to have any more. So we brewed some flowers from the elderberries, and we put that in everybody's eye. Within 24 hours, everybody's healed and moving on. So just another tip That's with amazing. how amazing elder flowers will do that. Yeah. The berries are really good because they're, um, they inhibit the viruses from entering the cells. 
So it's the best viral uh, product that you can get. That, and because uh, in medicine, there are no drugs that'll treat viruses. If you have a virus, or you go see your doctor, he's going to tell you, there's nothing I can do about it, go home and you know, yeah, drink right. li liquids. But actually the Sambucus, the uh, elderberry, will stop those invaders from getting into the cells. So having that on hand will stop your viral infections immediately. So, and it tastes great, it tastes like berries. Really? So it's one of those products, a lot of times when we have problems with our children is to try to find something that they will take. Yes, yes. They don't like bitter medicine, but this is easy to, for them to take. We're running out of time. I want to mention these last two because I associate them with something totally different. <laughs> um, we own cats, so um, catnip is something that, that humans can take. Right, it's, it's mini and lemon. It's part of the mint family. It makes you cat friendly, which if you have cats, there you go. It's, it's, there's oh a positive boy. of that. It's loaded with vitamins C and E, which are antioxidants that fight off free radical damage, which causes illness. So it's important to have that. But mostly why you want it in your arsenal for the winter is because it soothes the stomach and the nerves. So if you've got a little upset tummy and you feel a little nauseous, you might have a stomach flu, you need catnip to okay. do that. Okay, and then marshmallow, we don't just put it in our hot chocolate then, right? I know, people think that small little fluffy sugar cube, and yes. that's not, this is different, this is marshmallow, that's marshmallow. Oh, oh there and you go. And marshmallow is a root of a really pretty uh, plant, but it has this wonderful quality that it soothes membranes all throughout your body. So if you have cough, laryngitis, bronchitis, a cold, or hoarseness, uh, marshmallow will solve that problem. It, it soothes it and makes it easier uh, so you don't feel so rough there and um, calms it down. Well, thank you, Nancy. It's almost time to go, but first an update on our fall funding campaign, continuing Christ's mission into 2016. Thanksgiving has been a thankful time for us here at TV44 and some folks we want to thank who have partnered with us in our campaign. Andy? Mr. and Mrs. Larry Sprague from Lima, thank you so much for your monthly gift. Also, Mr. and Mrs. Harold Merkel in Van Wert, thank you so much for your gift as well. We've almost reached the $65,000 mark of our $175,000 goal. We're so appreciative of all of your gifts. Reminder that you still can get your year-end giving in before the end of this month. Well, if you've been thinking about donating to TV44 but haven't, or maybe it's been a while, now is a great time. There are five easy and convenient ways to give to TV44. Donate by mail or in person at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. Donate over the phone with your credit card at 419-339-4444, online at WTLW.com, or sign up for monthly automatic withdrawal by emailing contact at WTLW.com. And like I said, there is some year-end tax-deductible benefits yet, right? Yeah, don't forget about those. All donations postmarked by December the 31st, 2015 will be included in the year-end tax receipts. Now, one more look at our verse. We're walking the path when our Savior was born, Luke 2, 1 through 6, and it came to pass in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census took, first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Just a special story that we celebrate each and every Christmas. That'll do it for us here on Faith and Friends. Thanks for being with us. Holiday Music Festival is coming up next week. And of course, the Christmas season reigns around. Keep Christ in Christmas. We'll see you next week.